Hello and welcome to this After Effects tutorial that's looking at the Scribble effect. Scribble is found under Generate Scribble. We'll also be having a very brief look at the Stroke effect as well. Now the thing about Scribble is it doesn't necessarily work in quite the way you think because Scribble needs masks. It won't work unless there are masks. So if we create a new composition, I'm going to make mine power widescreen square pixels, five seconds long, click OK, and I'm going to create text. So I'm going to click my text tool, I'm just going to type After Effects. and center that up. Now you'd have thought that you could take Scribble and you could apply it to a text layer. Let go and it appears to apply. Um, hang on and I go through all the bits and pieces and nope, doesn't seem to do anything. However, I'm going to delete that. What we can do is we can take the text layer and we can go to the layer menu and we can go down to one of these options at the bottom that says create masks from text. And when you create masks from text, it turns off the text layer and gives us our mask layer. You can untwirl that and you can look at your masks. They're all your masks. And what we can then do is we can take the scribble effect and we can drag it and drop it onto the masks and then it begins to be applied. And then we can actually work out how to apply it ourselves. Now obviously we can apply it to individual masks if we want. But right at the top, you'll see that it says to a single mask, to no masks at all, to all masks, which works fairly well, or the alternative is all masks using modes. And let's take into account that they are difference modes, and that will cut out the holes that have been created in those masks. So if we click all masks using modes, the scribble effect is applied, hit the space bar, and you'll see that it is auto animating. Now we've got a whole bunch of ways that the scribble effect can be applied. Notice we've got a fill type drop down. At the moment we're inside, we can have a centered edge. So it's kind of centered on the edge. We can see something that looks fairly interesting. Inside edge, which looks similar to what we've just done. Outside edge, which I think is really quite effective, giving us a really kind of um, a negative type look, which can be really powerful. And then left edge and right edge and back to inside. So you've got a whole bunch of options that can suit your work. And while we're looking at this, you'll see that there's also a drop down that says edge options underneath fill type. And it's actually to do with the fill type. If you drop down edge options, initially they all look like they're grayed out and unusable, but when you change the edge options, so if you go to a centered edge, you'll see that many of them start to come open and we can play with the edge width. So if I just zoom in a little to show you, we can take the edge width right down to give a more outlined look. Then we can look at end caps. Now you're not going to see much of a change with end caps. If we go to the different options you won't see them because they're really affecting the ends of the lines. The main difference you will see when it comes to the join, in other words how these lines are joining up with each other, we can have a bevel which gives us a slightly different look. We can also have a mitre which again gives us a slightly different look. So these aren't going to make a massive difference but you can change the mitre limit in other words, how small or how large does an angle have to be before it becomes a mitre? These are just additional options that you can play with. One last thing, when it comes to animating it, you can see that it gives us one other option that says Start, End, Apply To. Now, we'll come to Start, End a bit later on, but we can apply these changes to the scribble results, i.e. its default settings, or you can actually drop it down and you can take it to follow the mask path itself. So these are additional options. We're not actually going to use any of these at the moment. So I'm just going to click back up, click reset, and go back up to fit. The other thing I ought to say is that we are applying this to masks which we've created from text. Of course, this will work with any mask that you create, be it one that you draw yourself or one you import from Illustrator or some other program. Anyway, moving on, you can play with the color. It doesn't have to be white. It can be green or yellow or magenta or whatever color you want it to be just by playing with that particular color slider. I'm going to leave mine at white at the moment just so you can see it better on the screen. 
Next, obviously we can play with the opacity, so we can turn it right down and up, and we can change the scribble angle. At the moment it's going at a standard 60 degrees. You can animate the angle as well, so it doesn't have to go from 60 degrees, it can go round and round and round. It can be whatever you want it to be, but I'm just going to leave it at 60 just for this demonstration. The stroke width is quite important. You can take it really large, in which case you end up with this kind of, um, well, filled effect, which is almost like a sort of a jagged edge effect or somehow. But also you can take it down and you can go below, as you can see, one pixel, which is quite interesting. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. So you see we're at 0.8 pixels. You can even go down to 0.1 pixels. So you can actually go below a pixel to get the end result that you want. I'm going to leave it fairly low and show you some of the other options that we've got here. We've actually got some stroke options, and you can actually twirl that down, you find out you've got a whole bunch of options. And some of them are also variations, which means you get a randomness over the whole result. So curviness is simply making the whole thing very curvy. But if you can turn that down a bit, and we turn up the curviness of variation, you'll see that it randomizes which bits are very curvy and which bits aren't so much curvy, which gives a much better more random look and with scribble obviously you want it to look very random just going to right click those and reset them and the same goes with spacing if i take spacing out you can see that the line spacing comes broader and broader until it almost doesn't look like um, a, a scribble effect at all or certainly a very very limited scribble effect i'm going to zoom in again on that one um, and then you can go down to the spacing variation and turn that up and it'll say well some bits are going to be well spaced together and other bits aren't and of course it's all based on what sort of spacing you choose in the first place. And of course the variation, in my opinion, is quite important for giving that more random look. So I'm just going to right click those again to get them back to their original values. And then you've got path overlap, and this is kind of like an expansion. It's kind of like expanding the paths into each other. And if I pull the path overlap out, it almost gives it a sort of a semi-3D look or a, or a depth look to it. And I would have thought that would be quite good for a, some sort of transition of some sort, going from a wide transition to a, a pull-in. And of course we do have path overlap variation, which can completely randomise the whole thing and make it inviewable and you can't see what it is. But again, if you were taking that back down as a reveal of some sort, then you could take those two things down and produce some fairly nice reveals that look fairly impressive. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to right-click those and take them back to their default values. So there's lots of options when it comes to the stroke options and they're worth playing with to get the sort of result you want. I'm actually going to take my stroke width up a little bit more, in fact I'm going to right click that and take it back to its default values and I'm going to close stroke option because a great animation tool starts here with start and end. I'm going to untwirl both of those to reveal the sliders and they are very obvious really. One of them is going to animate from the start to the end and the other one's going to animate from the end to the start. And as you start to pull them, you'll see that the scribble will scribble off. If I take that one start to end, if I take end from end to start, then if I wanted to, I could start the whole thing there at my composition. I can take my current time indicator to the beginning, hit the stopwatch at the beginning, go to the end of the composition and take that across. And you'll see that I would have animated on my After Effects scribble all the way through. Now, of course, there are other options. You don't actually have to have it animating at all. It is auto-animating. You can have it completely static, in which case it won't do anything, but it will come on without scribbling, which can be quite nice for a write-on effect. Or alternatively, you can have it as a, as a jumpy effect, which is kind of, well, giving that almost posterized look, as if it's um, not quite right or it's a, a poor frame rate. So it's up to you, depending on what your animation is going to be. You can play with how many wiggles per second so that it can go a lot quicker or it can go a lot slower depending on what your animation requires and random seed is just a different starting point you can change the random seed and it'll just show it starting in a different place so that if you've got a number of things all starting together and you don't want them to all look as if they're starting at exactly the same place each one of them can start with a different random seed the last one is fairly interesting it says composite on transparent so at the moment you can see we're compositing straight on a transparent background but we can on the original image. So there's the original image and we're kind of scribbling around the edges, which is quite an interesting look. And also we can reveal the original image, which I think it gives us a much straighter edges. So it reveals it and it doesn't give us the, the, the scribbling over the edges. This is more like a girl scribble. A girl scribble is always inside the lines, whereas 
boy's scribble is always outside the lines. Well, mine always is anyway. So it's those sort of options that you can have. Of course, one of the great things about scribble is it works very well in conjunction with the stroke effect, which also needs masks. So if I go over here and go stroke, you'll see that we've got the stroke effect right at the bottom. Generate stroke and we'll take the stroke effect and we can drop it on the same layer. And it gives us a stroke. I'm going to open up, uh, in fact, I'm going to close the scribble. We'll just look at stroke. At the moment, it says it's just going on the A, but of course, we want it to go on all masks. So it's going to affect all of those masks. And we can change the color. I'm just going to choose a color that's obvious, like red at the moment. And we can work through this very quickly. At the moment, it says stroke sequentially. And that's to do, again, with these start and end options. So if I play with the start and end options, you'll see that we can stroke sequentially as they come in through the masks however if we uncheck that box you'll see that they just come in as masks from start to finish so from the top to the bottom so it's up to you again depending on how you want to reveal things how you're doing them for me stroke sequentially is quite nice um, the difficulty we have and in fact I'm going to animate the end as we did with the scribble effect I'm going to click the stopwatch go to the end and take it out to 100% is that sometimes what you will find is that the stroke doesn't come on in conjunction with the scribble. So the scribble will be doing something somewhere and the stroke will be doing something somewhere else and it won't look quite right. In this particular example, it's, it's okay, it's not too bad, but the two don't always work absolutely perfectly side by side. So just be aware that you might have troubles with those. Okay, let's just go through a couple of other bits and pieces. Obviously the brush size is how big the stroke is going to be. And the hardness is going to be how soft it is. We're going to have a very soft edge stroke or a very hard edge stroke. Um, I think the default's fine with that one, so I'm going to reset that one to default. And opacity, because obviously sometimes you want it there, but you don't really want it absolutely in your face. You just want it showing in the background. At the moment, however, I'm going to leave it showing just to demonstrate the final couple of bits and pieces. Spacing is quite an interesting one. Effectively, it allows this solid line to be turned into a series of dots. So one end it's a solid line, the other end, as you keep on pulling through, your stroke becomes a series of dots, which can actually be quite effective. So you can have more of a, a Vegas type look. There is a Vegas effect, but you can get this kind of look. It doesn't rotate around, but it does give you some interesting dotty looks. And then we've got the paint styles at the bottom. Now again, we're on the original image, but you can do it on transparent. However, if you do that, you won't see the scribble effect. You'll just be seeing the stroke effect and that's showing it the way around we've got it at the moment with the scribble at the top and the stroke at the bottom if you were to take the scribble to the bottom and you did that you would lose your stroke effect entirely so um, if you've got the stroke effect and you have it on just showing the transparent then you might as well not bother with the scribble in the first place but you can still get a nice effect it looks, still looks pretty cool as far as i can see and the last one we have is the reveal original image which gives us an interesting sort of um, cutout effect, which is quite interesting and uh, I, th I think looks really nice. And of course you can change the color of that. At the moment it's white because my scribble is white. If I open up my scribble and I was to change that say to bright green and click OK, then I can have a bright green sort of revealing of the scribble stroke edge. And if you want to make it bigger, of course, you can actually make the brush size of the stroke bigger you can get a much bigger look depending on how big obviously the the brush size is in stroke and the color is based on the color of the scribble take that back to white so that's how you can create some very interesting text looks with scribble and stroke it would be wonderful if we could apply this scribble effect to say a shape layer but unfortunately it's not absolutely straightforward you can't just drop it onto a shape layer so in the next tutorial very briefly I'm going to show you how we can apply this scribble effect, and if you then want the stroke effect as well, how we can apply it to a shape layer through using other tools that we have in After Effects. My name's Andrew Devis. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.